I am in my orchard and in my garden. I love singing and I love cooking. So I'd like to invite you to my home where we can laugh and have fun and cook and talk and create something beautiful and delicious. Join me. Many of my friends have said to me over the years, we think you've missed your calling, Denise. You should have been a singer at all. You should have been a party planner or you should have been a baker. Well, I think I still should have been a singer, but <laughs> I also enjoy cooking. So I want to invite you to my home. I hope you can join us. It's going to be a lot of fun and delicious. Time to get cooking. Hi, I'm Denise, and welcome to Cooking with Denise. This is our third episode, which we are calling Into the Deep. I am so excited about today's show. Um, I'm so excited about my guest and a surprise guest that we have and a wonderful announcement that we have to make. So we're trying to fit a lot into this hour. So thank you all for joining us today. I appreciate all of your the email and the text that I have gotten um, since we began this. It's been very, very moving. So everything's been deeply felt and very much appreciated. So thank you all so much for your support. Um, today's first guest is a great American singer. He's been described as having a mountain of a voice with resonance from the palace of Philip II to the throne of Boris Gudnov and the majestic court of Zarastro to name just a few of his noble roles. He possesses a voice of extraordinary range, depth and color combined with a magnetic and commanding stage presence, he is described as someone who delivers all the goods. And today, he will be delivering us all of his culinary goods from his kitchen in Virginia, right outside of Washington, DC. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kevin Thompson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kevin Thompson. Hello, everyone, and hello, Denise. How are you today? So good. I'm so excited about this, and I've been so excited getting to know you over these past few days when we've been discussing menus and what we're going to do. Um, you and I have never worked together, but honest to God, every time I heard your voice on the telephone or on Zoom or whatever it was we, we were doing, my body would shake. Honest to God. I <laughs> body. What a voice. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. And you know what? When we decided to do this show, so many, so many people said to me, you got to get Kevin Thompson. You got to get Kevin Thompson. Of course, Reggie was one of the first ones in that, in that, in that chorus. And then I heard from so many people, Karen Slack said, you got to get Kevin. He's so serious about food. One of my students, Rebecca Roy said, oh, you've got to, you know, get Kevin. So the word is out on the street that you are phenomenal in the kitchen. So I'm delighted to have you with us today. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So can you tell us what we're going to be making? Yes, we're going to be making a Mediterranean dinner, which I would call like a delight with fish, 
roasted potatoes that are nice and crispy, a little special trick that we're gonna do there, and a wonderful Mediterranean Greek salad. So that brings me to, thanks so much, that brings me to the very first announcement, which is called Guess the Fish. This recipe originally calls for a rainbow trout, I believe. Is that right, Kevin? It is. Are you but pulling something fast on me? Since we're having Kevin with us today, I thought, duh, we should certainly use a fish that speaks to his being here today. So along with today's announcement, we would like to offer a giveaway. And this offering will be a special gift to the first three people who email to cookingwithdenise at gmail.com the correct fish that I will be using today in honor of Kevin. So again, the giveaway will be to the first three people who um, can guess the fish that I'll be using. Now, that brings me to um, the announcement. Today's winners will receive a very first custom created hand blended spice made for cooking with Denise by Salt Table. They're based in Savannah, Georgia and run by Dave and Carol Legacy. They own the brand and I asked them to bottle up a blend specifically for cooking with Denise. And the name that we're calling this spice is Denise's Opera Blend. And it will be the center stage of all of your wonderful dishes. So it's 100% natural and it works on fish. It works on beef, chicken, veggies, starches, all of the all of the above and you can find this particular um special blend of denise's opera blend at www.thesalttable.com and that's the first giveaway today for our for the first three people who email the correct response as to the fish that i'm cooking today in honor of kevin so kevin kevin you ready to get going i'm ready and congratulations on your wonderful new seasoning I'm excited. I'm excited about that it. That is so exciting. There, the Carol and, and Dave, they're so lovely. They've been so kind to me over the years for other things. So I'm excited. And we're using it today, by the way, of course. So Kevin, what are we going to yes, get started? What are we going to get started? Let's get started on our potatoes. Potatoes. So we're going to take, uh, yes, yes, yes. We're going to take our uh, two tablespoons of salt okay. and three tablespoons of the uh Baking soda. I'm sorry, a tablespoon and a half of the baking soda. Do you measure That's everything? One thing. It's kind of eyeball it. Well, I did measure it because I figured if I want people to cook at home with me, uh, they need to know what's happening. But I do like to eyeball a lot of things. And so the we're going to put that into our boiling water. Hmm? The fun part for me is when you put the baking soda in it. Yes, it is. It's going to do an alkaline and it's going to give it a nice, it's going to make the potatoes kind of mushy a little bit. And you're gonna now pour your potatoes in. And then we're gonna get that boiling again. And we're gonna let that go. In the meanwhile, while we're doing that, yes. we're gonna put, we're gonna do our wonderful infused garlic and rosemary olive oil. So Kevin, I have, gonna... I have to tell you go something. I have to tell you something. I tried this recipe last night, you know, yes. uh, and my favorite part of this entire dish is the garlic and rosemary infused olive oil. That I'm is happy you love it. I love it. It is, it is really great. It is really great. I need to check something really quick to make sure we don't have a, <laughs> a problem. We're good. All right, so now we're gonna take our garlic and rosemary, and now we're gonna put this in the olive oil. Very good. I've got that right here. And you just let that get sort of a golden brown, the garlic? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, ma'am. Very nice good. Golden brown. Nice golden brown. And then you put And your you're gonna let that happen. Say one more time. Your fresh rosemary goes in there? Yes, fresh rosemary. Because you're gonna save that at the end, because you gotta separate this at the end. And you're okay. gonna save that at the end to put all mixed together. So you're okay. gonna separate the olive oil but we'll do that as soon as we get it nice and brown and 
toasty over here. All right. How's it going on your end? Well, very, very going. <laughs> and yours? <laughs> so, Kevin, when did you start cooking? Because the word is out about you in the kitchen. Well, my stepfather uh, growing up was a chef. And I always tell people he never taught me how to cook. Not that he, I didn't ask, but I always say he taught my taste buds. So Ooh. I'm the type of person, if I go to a restaurant, I definitely want to, I love to fine dine. Most people know that from all my Instagram and all that and Facebook. So I love to fine dine and I go out and I'll try things. And then I want to come back home and recreate it. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. And you, how did you start cooking? Well, I, I, I spoke about this on the very first show. Um, I'm oh. one of three kids in my family, and um, my mother was busy working, taking care of the family, so she worked several jobs. So um, my mother would assign each one of us a week to do something. Either we had a week to yeah. cook, or we had a week to clean, or do the dishes, that sort of thing. So we had to have dinner ready when my mother came home. So that's really where that started for me. That's Awesome. She was, I know. She was so, so smart. Way to go, mom. That's the way to do it. <laughs> way to go. Yes, exactly. And now you're cooking for a whole family over there. All the time. I actually love it, you know. And are you doing that a lot when you're away on your engagements, Kevin? I mean, oh, this is. If I, have a, if I have a kitchen, if there's no kitchen, then oh, no. Right. I'm dining out. But I definitely like to do a little bit of both. If I have a kitchen, then I'm definitely doing that. But I definitely want to check out the local eateries from the less expensive to the most expensive because I want to know what's really good. Right. How's your garlic and rosemary doing over there? You're ready. I'm ready. Oh, you're ready. I'm ready. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the process now of straining that. All right. So I'm going to do the same strain. I'll bring it forward so people can see it. All right. And then you toss. How are your potatoes them. coming? They're good. We're we're ready. We're ready over here. I in my water, I always add a little bit. I always add a bay leaf to the hot water. That's when nice. I'm potatoes, so I put a bay leaf in there in addition to the salt and the baking soda. Just that give is it a very little. nice. But this is this dish is packed with flavor because of this rosemary and garlic infused olive oil. That's so yes. great. I love it. I got this off a of line, and I just thought, you know. Let me it's see really if I can put a little spin on it, but I think, wow, this is really, really great. Well, you know? molto bravo. <laughs> they said I made it last night to, to have a go at it, and boy, did, was that delicious. But you know what, Kevin? I wanted to ask you something, actually. Oh, man. It seems like the potatoes have to cook for a long time, right? You, you first Depending put on how many potatoes you're cooking, and I'm, I'm experiencing that right now. I've made a bigger batch this time, and yes, it does take a little bit longer, you know? I think the rich, original recipe is, you know, if you're cooking for like uh, three people or so, but if you're cooking for more, and I always think a potato a person, um, because I think normally if you're having like a steak dinner or something like that, or if you're vegan, like you would have one baked potato. You wouldn't have like five baked potatoes or three baked potatoes. I mean, you could, but uh, you know, so I always think like that, one potato per person. Right. So right. yeah, I, it is taking a little bit longer for them to boil today. <laughs> okay. Well, I, yeah. uh, all right, very good. I'm wh while, while that's happening for you, I'm gonna get the tomatoes. These tomatoes came from my garden, so I'm super proud of that. Wow, all they're you, beautiful. For your Greek salad, all of these tomatoes came from my garden along with the cucumber that we're using also came from my garden today. Wonderful. I have a nice mixed medley of tomatoes here, red, yellow, Oh, that's all gorgeous. that over here. That's and I'm cool. gonna go ahead and cut up a few Romana tomatoes. Very good. Yeah, so, so we're getting a salad week, ready. Right, last week we did, um, lasagna and i actually made my own pasta sauce from uh, the roma tomatoes actually i saw that did you yeah yes it oh, looked amazing thank you so much i appreciate that i was jealous i didn't get to have any of that north carolina uh, hot sausage though oh my god <laughs> every recipe should start like this right before you make the potatoes before you boil the water you cook the sausage from North, the North Carolina sausage, right? You right. eat the sausage, and then you start the recipe, 
right? So that's <laughs> <laughs> you eat that, and then you start your potatoes. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, Kevin, we've not worked together, have we? No, but we did do something in Washington, D.C., when you were the narrator for Millennium Stage. I think it was back in 1994. But actually, let me just tell you this. I actually first heard of you and when I was in high school. Uh, that was a little oh time ago. Oh, my God. Just yesterday. One of those people and that told me you were like in the children's chorus when I was doing something. Not exactly, but I came to see you do Dvorak Stavard Mater at the Kennedy Center with Alessandra Mark, Kevin Short, Michael Forrest, and you were the mezzo. Oh my God! Yeah. And then again, the next year, uh, I went to see you at the, you did your concert, I think it was with the National Symphony uh, at Wolf Trap. Is that right? I'm yeah, so I've been a fan yeah. for quite some time. Oh gosh. Well, I, you know, I've gotten to know you and you're singing a little bit as we prepare for this show. And what a voice you have. Yes. I mean, what well, a voice you. you have. I mean, just earth shattering. I love the, um, the critics um, description of a mountain of a voice. You know, I think that's very humbling. I think, well, I think very humbling. I think it's accurate. I'm going to get going well, on my little salad over here because my potatoes are ready to go into the oven. All right. You might beat me to that. I also want to say to you what an extraordinary voice you have and what an extraordinary gift you've been to all of us throughout the years and you continue to be with your extraordinary talent. Absolutely. You're a blessing. God. Well, to God be all the glory. You know, this Amen. thing has been the biggest Amen. surprise of my life. And, um, you know, I'm not one who would have thought that I would have found myself on the operatic stage at all. It's not really very much um, in my nature. And I come from a family who sings. My brother and my sister, we had a singing group, actually, when I was a little kid. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, we had a singing group. And we used to go around and sing in different churches. And um, that's kind of how my mother didn't realize what, uh, what a monster she was creating when she... <laughs> <laughs> You know that laugh. Of course, you, you, that's perfect for all the villain, all the villain roles. You know, for you that that laugh of yours is amazing. All right, I'm ready to put these potatoes in the oven. All right, you've already strained yours. Go ahead, and I will be following you momentarily. I've strained. Did you already mix them in the oil? I did. I mixed them and in. Did you make them rough? That's very important. What What did you say? Did I? You want to mix them roughly? In the bowl with the oil, I you did. want to be able to go like this. Okay, perfect. I did. I just so, want to make sure the view. I just want to make sure the viewers know. Right. Okay. So, but when you say to make sure that it's rough, what are you meaning? What is it? Like it needs to have a little bit of a mashed potato looking on it, a exactly. little bit. Exactly. So therefore, when it goes in the oven, that's what's going to crisp. All right. Terrific. That's what's going to crisp up. Okay. So does that go? That goes in for twenty minutes the first time, Kevin. The first time, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, ma so I'm going to set my little alarm clock here on 20 minutes, so we're ready to go on that. Let me get that I'm in the pouring in the oil. All right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and strain my potatoes now. Okay. I'm just talking them through it while we're doing it. All right, I'm going. <laughs> and into, uh, I'm going into the. So, how have you been doing, Kevin, during COVID and all this stuff? How have you been well, getting you know, it's not easy without work, as you know, oh. but uh, we as singers, we make it happen and we keep making, you know, there's lots of projects. And actually, uh, next month on the 9th, I will be doing a role debut and a company debut at Tulsa Opera. Um, I'm usually Spara for Chile, but I will be singing Monterone and we are actually doing this outside. Sorry about the alarm. <laughs> uh, we'll be doing this outside of the stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh my goodness. You know, my very first job was in Tulsa. Really? The very first engagement that I did back in the 80s. Um, Ed Purrington, God rest his beautiful soul. Um, I was, I was uh, doing the Young Artist Program at, at Central City and I'd done a recital yes. and Ed Purrington just so happened to be traveling through and um, he heard the title and offered me a role. And so they were doing Porgy and Bess, but um, he offered me 
third lady, or as I call it, third spear carrier from the right, in <laughs> a magic flute. And I had one of just one of the times of my life. Spectacular. Wow, that's awesome. I yeah. just want to show people what the mashed potatoes need to look like. So they're going to look like that. And they're not mashed potatoes, but that's what the potatoes need to look like going into the tray on the, on the oven. And that's, Kevin, that's because of the baking soda in the water? The baking soda and the salt. It just basically breaks down the potatoes some, yes. Yeah. And then you want to lay them on there. All right. Push them all around. And then we're going to put them in the oven for 20 minutes for the first go around. I'm going to turn up my oven the first go around. But it don't take that long, you know? Yeah. The best part is when you add the, the last part to it. When you add the rosemary and garlic and you Woo! infuse that goodness on top of it and put it oh, on the plate. Hey now. <laughs> I must tell you, tell it, me. It, it, it took you to get me out of, um, <laughs> I've been asked many times to go online and do something. And I'm like, no, no. And uh, so I thank you for... <laughs> Bringing me out of my shell, because here we are. Why? Why were we going gonna... to the oven? Well, you know, um, well, you know what it's like cooking. I mean, you cook at home, and you're not. It, nobody's watching you. You're just doing what you're doing, and you know, I'm cooking for three each night, and um, and so that's it. You know, um, I figured if we can't go out uh, to a restaurant, then you know, I mean, now we can, but when we couldn't, you know, I thought, well, make the restaurant at home, so I would make all different types of cuisines. There you know, go. right? Yeah. Oh, so you that's... know, but thank you for pulling me out. You just pulled oh, me out God. like like you pulled that yeah. like you pulled that fish out. Well, you're such a natural. You're such a natural. I, I wonder, Max. Did, did, do we know who who may have? Um... Okay, so we have. Do we have the winners? Yes, we, we have the winner. Uh oh. It's, uh -oh. Uh, Zeller, Celeste Mann, and Anthony Jackson. Congratulations, Anthony, Celeste, and Jessica. Thank you. I will be sending you with a, 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 a nice note the very, very, very first bottles of, what's it called again? Offered by Denise? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't used it enough yet. That's all right. The, the very first. Denise's Opera Blend Spice. Oh, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. Yeah. What are you over there cut? Oh, you so you took the skin off of your zucchini. Well, I'm sorry, you're uh well, I'm your cucumber. I always do it. This this comes from our garden. And yes. um, I mean, I know what's going on. It's all organic, what we've got going on here. Right. And um, I've got kids, right? I mean, I say kids, they're teenagers. But I yes. like in color for sure, but they have you know, I don't want the green. I understand. Part. I understand. I understand. I understand. Right. It's like cut the ends off the cut the ends off the toes, okay. right? This thing is touching <laughs> that. I can't touch that because you know that's not going to work for me. That so we've got all awesome. that done then, right? But uh -oh, I like. I see what you just pulled on me. That's awesome. That is awesome. It is beautiful. Yeah, all the different colors I think are wonderful. You know. Uh. So I'm we did ask you, which one of your favorite roles? Just just oh gosh. So just one second. We didn't announce what the fish is. Oh. So it's been put online. But go ahead. Anyway. It is bass or bass, as we're calling it today. Of course, because of Kevin. And my husband mm -hmm. can tell you a little bit about the fish that we have here in our pond. Because we've got bass. We've got where are you, honey? You want to tell us a little bit about that? You've asked me about my favorite roles. Yes, ma'am. I think my favorite, favorite role is probably Charlotte in, uh, hi, is probably Charlotte in uh, Verter, if I, if I have to say my very favorite. So this is mm, my wow. husband. Looks lovely. This is my husband, Dr. Robert Montgomery. And honey, can you tell about the fish that we have here in the pond? Sure, so um, I guess we kind of dabble a lot, um, and so I'm sort of an expert in nothing other than surgery, transplant surgery, but um, I know enough to kind of be dangerous. 
So one of the, the things that we've just started doing um, is um, we're dabbling in aquaculture. Um, so we've, um, we've uh, restocked a pond that was actually uh, built um, in the 1950s, redesigned it, and um, it has uh, bass and trout and um, a number of different panfish, some perch and bluegills and sunfish. And we haven't done our first harv harvest yet, but um, this time next year, I think we'll, we'll be able to pull the first bass out. And uh, I was hoping to have the bass for today's show. I woke up my son early and I was like, Matt, you gotta go fishing. You gotta go fishing and get some bass for the show. But that'll have to be same time next year. Yeah, obviously it's a freshwater pond and the bass that Denise is gonna make today is, um, is saltwater sea bass. Um, Wonderful. You know, bass, bass is a term that's kind of used for a lot of different fish, um, both fresh and saltwater fish. We also have a gorgeous um, stream that um, runs through the property that has native trout, um, brook trout, um, and brown trout. And in fact, we just um, did a little project with the fisheries department where um, we tagged um, some of the trout and did some um, thin um, samplings for uh, DNA analysis, um, and so that was uh, that was really exciting. So we 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 really got a good sense for the number of trout in the stream because um, a, a lot were captured and then of course released again. Um, so that's sort of um, our 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 little uh, foray into the fish area on the uh, on the farm. So Kevin, you'll have to come over fishing. Do you, are you an outdoors person? I will. I am. My father used to take fish me fishing when I was little. Oh, is that right? What did you say? Yeah. Fly fishing, fly fishing only, though. We're we're pure. Ah. Fair enough. <laughs> Out so, of the air. You you. What's your favorite role? You asked me about mine. Well, you know it's interesting. I always tell people. And I've heard people say this. It's kind of the one that you're singing at the time. But that's that's maybe a little, it is your favorite at the moment. But I would say anything Verdi. I love singing Ramses. I love singing um, uh, Spada Fucile. You know, ah. I just really love Verdi. And that would be my favorite composer. But I will say singing Mephistopheles is definitely ah. quite a fun job. But it's a long evening. <laughs> you didn't ask me my favorite opera. Uh, actually, What's I have your favorite two. opera? Is Dialogue of the Carmelites and ah. Mephistopheles. Wow. So I want to come hear you sing that someday once we get through all this. Yes. Well, thank you. And I hope that we get to grace the stage together one day. Oh, Kevin, Kevin, I would really love that. I would Me really too. love that. You know, so Me too. We'll, we'll put that out there. We'll put that out there from your mouth to God's ears. And yes. so, that, so that'll happen. How are you coming along? I'm doing great. Have you already mixed your salad? You already pulled the red wine vinegar on there and everything? I'm using some of my Denise's opera blend in that too. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. And Wonderful. Yep. So that's going. Although I have to say, I miss the green color. I miss the green. I will say. Miss the green. <laughs> well, you have a light green. You have a light green. I have a light green. I may I may put some arugula uh, in that or something just to Give it some nice color. Yeah. The potatoes are going. The potatoes are going. Yes, so they are. I want to say to the audience, we have something very special planned for you today. Yes. A very special moment, which will be happening momentarily. Oh, and me, we sweat and strain, body all aching and racked with pain. Took that bar and lift that bail. You get a little drunk and you land in jail. I get weary and sick of trying. I'm
Molto bravo, molto bravo. What are you so doing at the piano? I want to see how low you sing. I want to see how. I want to see if I can go as low as you can. I know I can't go as low as you can, right? But I don't know about that. I I no, I can't. <clears throat> so what? Is that low for you? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, that's, uh, that's nothing. That's low for you though. Ah. Uh, what about this note? Ah. Uh, Well, how low do you go? Uh, uh, well, the roll of Osmin goes down the low D. Like at the middle of your voice. It sounds like at the middle of your voice. Again, a piece of cake, that's nothing. Uh, that's pretty impressive, Denise. That's uh, That's probably it for me. Uh, Holy moly. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 how, how low do you go, Kevin? Uh, well, the role of Osmin sings a low, uh, a low D. Oh, uh, no, no, is that a low D? What'd you say? Is that a low D? D, D as in dog. Uh, uh, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> well, it's pretty impressive what you did do. It's pretty impressive. Holy moly. It's pretty impressive. I'm gonna come join you in the kitchen. Kevin. All right, I look forward to seeing you. you keep surprising Kevin. me. Yes, ma'am. When did your tell voice us, tell us. When did your voice change? So when I was in high school, uh, I would say it probably already truly started changing in sixth grade because I was singing boy soprano like most people. And really? then it became um, and then I would say it just kept falling, is what I would say. So baritone, then by the time I got to high school, I was already a bass and, and pretty disappointed because I just thought, well, the basses don't sing much of anything. What am I going to do? You you were a bass already by that time. How how old were you then? I was, I guess you're in high school. Yeah, 15, 15, 14, 15. Yeah, well, already a bass. What break? Um, definitely, probably fifth grade is probably when it first broke. Yeah. Holy mo, that's early, isn't it? Well, yeah, but I guess for bass, I guess it's not early. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is, it fortunate, always, is it fortunate to be a bass because it's such a rare voice type? We don't have so many of you. Is it? That is very true. That is yeah. very true. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting, you know. However, most opera composers didn't fully write for the full low voice. You know what I mean? Like people think about Osmin being one of the lowest voices or one of the lowest roles, he sings the lowest note, but actually the rostral, actually the tessitura of that role, the range of it, it sits lower. So it's always interesting because Osmin has to sing like Fs, lots of them, and, uh, and, and the rostral only sings five high E flats. So, you know, it's not too difficult. And, and he has plenty of low parts, you know? Holy moly, Kevin. Uh-oh, you're getting out that fish. I see, I see. I'm going to go get mine. And I'm like, let's party on let's make it roll yes let's make it roll yeah, because the fish does not take long at all fish goes no really, really i got fast. some rainbow trout and i got that sea bass chilean got, sea bass over here you've got some chilean sea bass i did because i figured you'd pull a fast one on me <laughs> base sea base don't you mean that <laughs> yes sea base sea base honey yes Yes, 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 yes. Have you made this dish a lot, Kevin? Yes, you know, it's a good dish to have just um, as a very light, um, fragrant, and, and, and healthy, you know? It's not heavy. You don't feel heavy after you've eaten it. You feel right. very, very good about it, you know? Right. Exactly. And some so, weeks I just go ahead, some weeks I just go ahead and just have only, um, only fish, you know? Just fish and 
and vegetables. Right, right. During this quarantine. So are you now seasoning it also with your with your seasoning? I am using my seasonings. Of course, we're using the Denise's Opera Blend on that from the salt table for sure. But can you talk about this, um, Trout? You put your you put it skin side up, don't you? I do because I would like it to be crispy on the top. Yes. I see. I see. You know what my yes, husband does do. sometimes, which I've stolen, and now I do it. I, I know me. it's gonna sound weird. I know this is gonna sound weird, but he puts mayonnaise on his fish before cooking it. No, that makes sense. I've heard it's, of something like it, it pulls out the oils or something like that. Yeah, it's terrific. Yeah, that it makes a lot of sense. Totally works. That's amazing, so, and then you don't, and then you get that the grease, uh, the the oil in the fish actually gives it a little bit more. Um, because some fish you don't want it to dry out, right? Sure. Yes. I Are you I putting think mayonnaise on yours today. I hadn't planned on it. I was going to do it a la you know base style. <laughs> I was going to do it Kevin Thompson style, but I might do it on. I might. I may do it on some because I've got. Lots of different kinds of fish going on here. And when do you use the Greek? Um, when do you use the Greek seasoning? Yeah, so I'm putting the Greek seasoning on the fish, and I put a little yeah. bit in the salad also. Um, but I'm sprinkling on both sides of the fish. I'm also layering the bottom pan with lemons. Yeah. And putting the fish on top of it. Yeah. So that it can go. Oh, that's gorgeous. And I will. Yes, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Now, tell me about your, your bath. Exactly how are you doing this? Same seasoning? Well, no, I, just, you know, I actually do it really simply um, with baths. I usually just do, sometimes I may put a little um, uh, uh, mayonnaise on it. Just nice. Just nice. it and salt and pepper and serve that with some lemon, and it works. I mean, I think it works, you know. Wonderful. Now, are you putting the fish, the skin side up on the on the on the box? Because that's what Kevin Thompson told me to do. <laughs> you know, it's all about that bait. About that bait. <laughs> no trouble. Very good. Very good. <laughs> so I'm gonna break that out. Fish goes really quick. Um, the alarm just went off on my potatoes. By the way. All right, so you're about ready to turn over. I keep checking on mine. They're not quite ready yet, but uh -huh. we should be there shortly. Okay. All right. Very All right. Good. So, Kevin, can you tell can you tell us what was like your most like maybe your funniest moment on stage? Well, two, definitely <laughs> two. Um, <All> right. <laughs> one was singing the roster with Mississippi. And you know, it's leave us the rostro, the rostro. There's the chorus is singing, and so I'm on a throne, and they're supposed to be pushing me out right before I'm about to sing. And lo and behold, <laughs> they forgot the, the guys. I guess was struck. They forgot to push. So literally, while I'm singing my first lines, I'm on this throne that has no railing, and they're pushing me, and I'm literally like. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> like while I'm in between singing lines, like I couldn't say stop. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like about to like <laughs> fall, you know? Right. And the other most funniest moment I would say on stage is definitely when people ask me to dance. Cause I, as, as being a tall person, most people don't know this, but I'm six foot five. I mean, well, my friends do and everybody on Facebook, but if they don't know, they can't tell how tall I am in this kitchen. And I don't like bringing extra attention to myself, so I don't dance much, but I have definitely been asked to dance. And yeah, singing all's mean, I've been asked to dance on stage um, doing Ovi Vilik Strin Firun, which is, you know, really maybe not the easiest time to try to dance with singing uh, <laughs> a lot of your lowest notes to your highest notes. I think it's something like 18 or 20 uh d's and then you got like five e's and then you got to sing two low d's it's, it's quite a lot you know and the one yeah. low d is is a, a pedal tone what is your most funniest moments on stage well i've had lots of them i mean lots over the years <laughs> so yeah. many 
em embarrassing, horrifying, you know, all that stuff. I think one time that the story that I've told a lot is um, I was doing uh, my debut at the Vienna Staatsoper, okay? Yes, and that was during the time when Jose Carreras was battling leukemia. Uh -huh. do, you remember that? Do, you, do you remember that at all? I do remember that, of course. Okay, so um, so that's when that was happening. So I arrived in Vienna, all excited. I'm going to be singing. It was my first time going to be singing with Carreras, and I was so psyched and looking forward to it. And I arrived, and they said, "Oh, he isn't here. You know, uh, he's going to come later." And you know how that is. And so yes, I do. You're like, oh, I was looking forward to doing the work. We're we looking forward to doing the work and working in the rehearsal with him. And they said, you yeah. know. He not coming. So, you know, it got to be a couple days before the actual premiere, and I was like, uh, when is he coming? What's happening? And they were like, <laughs> yeah, he's coming, don't worry, you know, he's coming. I said, like, okay. So then, um, the day before, I was like, look, you know, I, what's happening? What are we going to do here? And they said, don't worry about it. You know, he will be here the day of the day oh, no. of the thing, the thing, they called me and they said, Mr. Carreras is not coming. I said, okay, what are we going to do? They said, we have somebody else. It's going to be Luis Lima. Do you remember that name? I do know, of course. And so they said, I said, well, he said, he knows the staging. He's done this production. Don't worry. It's going to be great. So, okay, great. So I arrived at the theater on time, and I'm always early at the theater, but when I got to the theater, he wasn't there because they were they had him in costumes and trying to get him fitted and all that stuff. So we were doing Carmen, yeah. right? So I said, well, okay, you know, we'll just have to, I'm just going to trust that he, know, he knows what he's doing. And I get out there, and I start singing the habanera. After the habanera, I have to throw the rose or the flower, or the kasha yeah. flower. And I realize, oh my God, I don't know who he is. I don't know what he looks like. <laughs> and, no and way. Yeah, and I'm supposed to throw it to the soldier, and there's nothing but soldiers on the stage. So it was the Pick one. Pick one. Pick many. No, there was nothing but soldiers on the stage. So it's ta -di da 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 ta -di da 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 it was the long one, and I had the rose, and I was doing this long sort of measured walk across the stage at the Stadtkoper, and I said, <laughs> and I said, bis du don jose? I said, no, ti da 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 da, bis du don jose? I was asking everybody, are you don jose, are you don jose, are you don jose? You, you, you. Yeah, that is a true story. I was, that, that is a true story. And it was one, I mean, it could have been a disaster, right? But it was one of the most- Absolutely was one of the most exciting things I've ever done because it was really Carmen meeting Don Jose for the very first time, you know? For the it, very first time. <laughs> I didn't know where he was gonna be and I didn't know where he was gonna, we were, you know how it is when you're meeting somebody for the first time and you're checking them out, he's checking me out, I'm checking him out. And I didn't know what, you know, where he's gonna be on, on the stage. It was really something, that was something, but it was one of the most thrilling moments. But I, yeah. I was terrified petrified in the beginning. I wonder if well, my there husband- there is something I, nice about that, that moment, you know? I, I just, I, I was petrified. But since we're doing the fish and we're gonna get the fish in the oven, I was wondering if my, what do you normally drink with your fish, with this dish? I'm gonna have a white wine for sure. Heck yeah, me too. And you know, uh, my husband is a really big wine enthusiast. So he's gonna maybe tell us a little bit about the wine that he suggests for this kind of a fish. You want to talk awesome. about that, honey? Sure. So, so I'm more of an enthusiast than an expert. That is for sure. Uh, <laughs> and, and definitely much more knowledgeable or interested in red wine than white wine. And I will say this too, and that's that you, you shouldn't feel that you know, it's great to have a good pairing with food, but you should drink the wine that you like, regardless of what the food is. But um, anyway, so I'm at a serious um, 
a disadvantage today for a number of reasons. Um, one, we're drinking white wine, which, you know, again, I'm not, it's not my, certainly not my, um, right. To go to. Yeast. And secondly, um, we're drinking a French wine and I am, um, always a lot more interested in, um, in American wines, actually, believe it or not. Um, so, and, and when I, when I do drink um, French wines, it's usually um, either um, uh, red burgundy or a Bordeaux. So um, you may know that um, the Bordeaux region is very rich. Um, it has a lot of different varieties. Um, and, you know, probably what it is you, you're probably most familiar with are the uh, Cabernet Savions and um, the Cabernet Francs um, from the Bordeaux region. But today we're going to drink a wine um, from, uh, from Burgundy. And Burgundy um, basically has four varieties, um, two reds and, and two whites. The red is, you, I'm sure it's most famous, the Pinot Noir. Um, and, and when I drink a, a, a Burgundy, it's usually, um, no. And I actually prefer the French um, Pinot, um, although we have some really good Pinot Noirs, particularly in Oregon. Um, and then there's the uh, Gamay, which is the other red. Um, and the two whites, uh, the, the one that is most common is the Chardonnay. And then there's a uh, Aligate. Um, which uh, is is lesser known. Today, this is a, a Chardonnay, and it's from um, the uh, vineyard of uh, Louis Jadot. And um, the name of the wine is Chardonnay uh, Le Bon. Now, Bon is um, an area in Burgundy um, that's probably most famous, and they make some really nice. Um, some really nice white burgundies. And you kind of can't go wrong um, if, if you choose um, a, a white burgundy or a red burgundy that has the word bon in, in the, on the label. So um, this wine, um, which we'll try here. Hey, give me some of that. I'm ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> May I? Sure. Is it good? It's very nice. So the reason I chose this wine is of the white burgundies, this tends to be on the bold side, which is what I like. So that's one of the reasons delicious. that I like the, um, that's delicious. the, I like the Napa reds because they tend to be pretty bold. Um, and this, does have that sort of uh, buttery flavor that um, we, you know, are familiar with in, in Chardonnays. This is very oaky um, and also has some nice um, uh, spice notes and, and, and uh, of some fruity notes, particularly uh, raspberry. It's a wine that um, retails for about 40 to $45. So it's, you know, Expensive, but not outrageous. Um, and I think it's gonna be an excellent wine to pair with um, our fish today. Wonderful. Yeah, Kevin, what do you have? Well, I'm having, I like more of a sweet. I'm not a big drinker, so most people know I don't drink, but I have a Moscato Asti is what I'm having. And I had this at this wonderful restaurant in Leesburg, you know Leesburg, I'm sure, called Wine and Kitchen. Wow. And the one thing I love about Wine and Kitchen is very little, but, huh? Which restaurant? Wine and Kitchen. Right, okay. Yeah, it's very little, but the thing I love about it is it gives you a tasting. You can have a tasting of three different wines for a little of nothing, and it's really wonderful, and that's why I first discovered this one. Oh, beautiful. So, yes. How are your potatoes coming over there? I think we're, we're, we're there. I mean, I think we're there. I know Did you Matt pull them out? Uh, I'm just going to wait for the fish. Got you. Fair enough. 
But um, I think we're like there. I know Max is ready. I've got Max is going to be one of my tasters, my boy Max, my very handsome Max, who's been helping me all summer long with Zooms and all things technical here. <laughs> I'm calling Wonderful. every five seconds. Max, can you help me with this? Max, can you have me, help me with that? But um, yeah, no, we're doing we're doing really really great. And I'm sure Max tells you, oh, mine's easy. It's just like this. <laughs> no, no, both the kids love to cook. They love being in the kitchen. Both Max and Ella love being in the kitchen, and they're really good cooks. They, they make some wonderful things. Ella loves to bake, and she does fantastic yeah. things all the time. You know, my husband's always asking for her banana bread, or she makes these chocolate mm. salt cookies, which are killer. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Max Max is really good at perfecting the sauce for the mac and cheese. That's like a I thing. I that. Yeah. And one time we took a family vacation and we, um, I wanted to really perfect the, um, the strawberry daiquiri. And so every day I was making all these different kinds of daiquiris and we had so much. And Max would tell me, oh, you need a little bit more of this or needs it. Well, he wasn't having the real daiquiri. <laughs> <laughs> but you made him believe he was, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. So they love being in the kitchen, and you know we're we're here on the farm all the time. So we we're really we're pretty isolated. So we don't go out that much, and certainly during COVID, right? We're spending Absolutely our time not. here. So it's really been a a, a wonderful time to uh, you know bonding time for the family. All right, how you doing, Kevin? I am doing great. I'm gonna get ready to start plating shortly. Oh, you're ready. Holy moly. Well, I mean, I haven't, pull, I haven't pulled it out yet, but I'm, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting. You know, we're doing this together. So. All right. Well, I, cause I don't think I fish takes a long time at all. You know, that's like, that's no, definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Absolutely. Right. So what kind of olive oil do you like to use? Well, several different kinds. You know, we're in the farmlands here and there's a wonderful yeah. farmer's market where they, and we have olive trees too. But uh, it isn't. Okay. Ready. Yeah, we have olive trees here uh, on our property, but it isn't ready for anything like that yet. It will be yeah. sometime. Our great, 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 big, gigantic dream after retirement is to maybe you know do a farm to table place, something like that. That's what we would love to do, and um, have the kids run it. But of course, they want nothing. That, that is them. awesome, and have the kids run it. That have is amazing. It and have them do the music, like farm to table restaurant. And wonderful, fantastic music, very, very intimate, sort of something like the In at Little Washington, very exclusive. That's the big, gigantic yeah. dream, right? That's All the right, big Kevin. picture. I got it. Yeah. I'm, how are you doing? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do these All potatoes. Right. Let's take our potatoes. You know, doing that, I just want to remind people that September is. Um, Sickle Cell Disease Month. So um, I know that the Sickle Cell Disease Association has partnered with um, the Red Cross. So if you want to learn about that, um, to, to educate yourself about your families and to see if you may be a carrier, I know that a lot of states usually do the testing for uh, babies at, at birth. A lot of states do that. But some people are carriers. And anyway, it's a, it's, it's a time that we're taking this month to focus in on being healthier and taking care of ourselves. And maybe as I play, my husband can tell a little bit about that because he's worked with um, sickle cell patients, haven't you, Robert? Yeah, so um, actually, you know, one of, um, so I do um, transplantation. Um, mostly I've been focusing on kidney transplantation in recent years. Um, and sickle cell disease um, can lead to um, kidney failure. So, you know, traditionally it was like, I say traditionally back in the 80s um, and early 90s that um, patients who have kidney failure from sickle cell disease are not good candidates for a transplant because um, it will reoccur um, in the transplanted kidney. So my first paper that I ever wrote um, was about our series of sickle cell patients who um, we transplanted sort of against um, the dogma. And 
we're able, um, by combining a number of different uh, medications for their immunosuppression, to get very good outcomes. So now, pretty routinely, um, patients with um, sickle cell disease who have renal failure from sickle cell disease will be able to get a, a kidney transplant, and that will transform their lives. Um, we also, when I was um, at, at Johns Hopkins, um, started doing bone marrow transplants um, for patients with um, uh, sickle cell disease to essentially cure their um, disease. So that's something that's still in sort of the experimental phases, but looks very promising. So that's my connection um, with the disease. Um, but it's a very serious disease that, um, you know, I, um, had, there's been, there have been a lot of advances, um, particularly in just um, treating patients with sickle cell disease and the clinical management of the disease has really improved. So how are we doing, sweetheart? We're doing great. It's coming along. That I made, looks gorgeous. I made two different kinds of potatoes. Wow. Oh, what did you pull on me over there? I I did a purple potato. She, she's she always does this sort of thing. Mm. Surprises. I did. Oh my, <laughs> you know, Lucky you before yeah. COVID. Um, you yes. know, we're, we're used to serving, and I love entertaining and having people over. And one time my husband came home when we were in another house and he said to me, he sat down for dinner and he said, honey, who are all these people here? <laughs> there were like five other people. He was like, who are these people? And it turned out that they then stayed with us for several days. So, um, yeah, but, but I want to also say that, um, you know, when my husband was working here, mostly in, um, in the area, in Maryland, um, sometimes um, he would have patients who were in the hospital and sometimes it'd be Thanksgiving and their families would be in town. And so we would invite their families to our home for Thanksgiving. And so sometimes I'd be cooking for like 30, 40 people for Thanksgiving because they would be the family members of the people who were in the hospital. Wow. Wow, y'all are some pretty amazing people over there. Trying to do our part, you know. That's it, that's it. We have to look out for each other at all times, at all times, because we're all in this together. You better believe we that's are. That's right. All right, Max, I think it's, I it's, think it's time. time to uh, do this thing. The moment of truth is happening. Yes. I gotta say, I mean, approaching here, it smells so good. And I was already hungry. So. You were already hungry? Okay. Here, why don't you take that to you and Dad? That's a gorgeous looking plate, by the way. Oh, the thank it's, you. The plate is so, it's so colorful and so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that mm -hmm. recipe with me. Teaching you me about it. You are most that. welcome. Yeah. You are most welcome. I'm going right. to put this other fish in there. Wow. Look at this. Did you, you get guys a get a that? good picture of that? Gorgeous. Did you get a picture of it? Now that did you, drizzle, like, it, did you so. drizzle it with a little olive oil at the end? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Where you got to go? drizzle it. You got to do it up. You got to do the drizzle. Oh, oh my yeah. God. And you got to squeeze a little lemon up on it. All the right. reason why I asked about the olive oil is because the reason why I asked about the olive oil is because this olive oil is from it's called the Jewel of Tuscany. And do you remember the restaurant in New York, Fiorello's? Sure, sure. That's their olive oil that they use. And really? I really, really, really love it. And this is your garlic infused. Oh, wow. This is the garlic infused. That's romaria. the garlic. Now, garlic. The goodness. Did you, also, did you also put this on the potatoes when you cooked them? I did, I did. Okay. All right, and there's my little presentation right here. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Honey, the, the bass looks beautiful. Perfect. Max loves that. Oh, this is my favorite. Like, this fish, the Chilean sea bass, I've never had any fish better. And I mean that. See? All right. None. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. Cheers to you all. First. I'll do the sea bass. Lovely. So I want to say that we've got another giveaway. And next Sunday's 
guest serves as the director for the Glimmer Glass Festival and for the Washington National Opera. And it's a great advantage for the singers who are in the audience today. But for the first three people who email who that guest is, you will receive a gourmet basket. Some, that is awesome. some from our garden. So, so that's that's the next giveaway. Who the first three people who can name correctly next week's guest who serves as director for the Glimmerglass Festival and also for Washington National Opera. There we have it. So to I you just, all. Sorry. I was just saying to you all as we're eating. <laughs> um, I just want to say <clears throat> again, the fragile certain is who knows what tomorrow may bring or take away. So make time in your every day to create something beautiful, whether it's making a beautiful meal for yourself or for your family, or if it's listening to beautiful music, or if it's taking time to just be quiet, to be in stillness, to restore yourself, make an effort to offer yourself something beautiful every day. I'm Denise, this is Cooking with Denise. I thank you all so much for spending this time with us. Now it's time for you to join um, LB, Lawrence Brown Lee for the sit down. And um, Kevin, is there something that you wanted to offer the audience for tomorrow for Labor Day? Yes, because tomorrow is Labor Day. We're gonna put together a nice seafood broiled dish for you all and send the recipe to Cooking with Denise and you will be able to find that I think on her website. That is lovely. Kevin, I really have enjoyed this so much. I really have loved getting to know you some, and I do hope that we have the pleasure to meet again up close and personal. It's been such a joy. I mean, people think so highly of you. I've been looking at some of the comments that have been um, coming up and some of the comments that I've received from colleagues of mine when they knew that you were gonna be here. Everybody, you are well loved and greatly admired, so. Um, thank you for just being who you are, for being the wonderful and human that you are, the wonderful example that you are. Keep on singing, keep on doing your thing, keep on hitting all those into the deep low notes, keep on bringing it. Yes, thank you thank so you much. And I just want to say thank you for sharing your platform and I wish you nothing but success and cheers to you and your family. Here's to you, here's to life. Happy here's Labor Day. Buddy, Bravo. Take care of yourselves. Thank you so Cheers. much for tuning in. Thank you. Cheers. Ciao. Ciao. Right on. Both. Both.